Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Sorry, it has been so incredibly long, but you know how life just kind of tends to happen. Anyway, I'm super excited today because uh, we are out on the launch pad, and this is the core component to our uh, Project Iron Sands, our crewed Mars mission. Uh, this is the basically the station that is at the moment uncrewed. We are going to attempt to park it in a Mars orbit and wait for the crew to show up, which will probably be next window, because uh, we have a bunch of launches. We're setting this expedition over in a bunch of chunks, including uh, this core module, some life support tanks, some fuel tanks, uh, things like that. So uh, expect a lot of sped up footage for this particular episode because I'm going to try to get to as much of it as possible because uh, I have absolutely no desire to do about 12 episodes in a row of me just launching stuff for Mars. There's our ignition sequence start because our relative inclination with the moon is at 0.25. Everything is lit. Let's get the clamps off. And we're going. Fantastic. So, uh, this was actually done being built before I had the uh, HG3s working. So this is uh, old style going up on 5J2s and 14 uh, E1 advanced engines. Um, it seemed to work in testing, so we're just going to kind of see how it, um, how it does here now that this is the real deal. The... Uh, the entire mission kind of hinges on this launch, which is why we're going about 10 days before our Mars window. I'm hoping that with um, a deviation like that, it won't matter a whole lot that we're going up that early. Because, you know, our transfer stage is a single J2 liquid hydrogen. So we, we can't really leave it parked in orbit for too long or all of that's just going to boil off. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to get this heavy little guy all the way to orbit, and I will see all of you there. So not a whole lot really to discuss. You've seen a uh, DN5B go up before, um, but I felt like this is a particularly long block of absolutely nothing. But uh, leaning in pretty heavily here to our gravity turn, I think I finally have an as uh, ascent profile uh, figured out for this thing on how best to fly it into orbit. So uh, I'm learning slowly but surely, but every time I have to go back and fly a different rocket, I kind of screw it up just a, a, a little bit. I, I can really only fly one model of rocket at a time. Anyway, coming up on booster SEP any second now. There they go, and off and away. And now that we're down to just our five J2s, it's uh, kind of just a, a nice little cruise to orbit. There's fairing SEP, uh, thankfully clearing the rest of the rocket by a good margin. And we can go ahead and start to boot up the station itself, uh, get our uh, solar panels extended, make sure our tanks are locked because we will be using RCS from the S4B stage. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and yeah, oh, we should get our comms set up too, huh? Target both of those towards Earth. But, and yeah, now they'll just kind of a long wait. Um, this is the point where I typically lean back in my chair and do other things, play with my phone for a couple of minutes, just kind of casually glancing over at the time to apoapsis. There I notice that I probably need to angle up a little bit, incur a bit more steering losses, maybe a lot more and uh, try to trade that for some uh, time to apoapsis to make sure I'm not falling down too terribly low. Uh, I did not have a specific orbit that I really just needed to be in for this, although really shooting for about 250 by 250 is kind of like a, a general median for what I try to aim for sometimes. Uh, yeah, just making sure there that I didn't accidentally uh, empty these tanks. There goes our core stage, and our single J2 S4B stage is lit. A um, little bit of an assist there from our, our thrusters, just as I would like to uh, get this bird circularized as quickly as possible and move on to the extra fun part of plotting nodes. I don't know how much uh, I thoroughly enjoy doing that. 
Yeah, this is the part where I do have to pay lots of attention, because uh, losing too much from this S4B stage basically scrubs the whole mission. If it can't get to Mars under this stage, then um, it might not make it at all. But anyway, we're coming up on circularization, so back to old me. All right, we're going to call that an orbit, uh, 299 by 202. Uh, I'm going to say that's not too shabby, especially with uh, 4,800 meters per second left in our uh, S4B stage. Uh, I'm quite happy with this. We can get rid of our rendezvous planner, and we can go ahead and start plotting for Mars. Do do. That's Venus. That's Mars. Set as target. And uh, maneuver planner, I guess, is the one that I want. We're going to have to bounce that into doing it. Oh, jeez. 5.1? Really? 54 days. As soon as possible. It's 4.5. Any time now. Create node. We can afford that. And should we see what that'll get us? Uh, it gets us an approach on the far side. Oh, that gets us an impact. Oh, buddy. Um, and yeah, we do... We do kind of want to come in on that side. Well, we're, we're, we're going to shoot for it. No guarantee that's what we'll get. All right, and we're going to go ahead and use some of the fuel from the station proper <laughs> and those super powerful thrusters that just litter the whole outside of the thing to angle ourselves in. We'll go ahead and turn our stability control off. That'll make up for the difference, I'm sure. Yeah, and we can go ahead and get rid of you. I love how Kerbal Alarm Clock tells us 11 days and Mech Jeb tells us 50 days. But uh, I guess if you're looking for efficient transfers... It says the burn's going to take 10 minutes. We don't have that much run time. That's very interesting. Um, why won't stability... No, oh, there we go. Maybe I was hitting the R key. Well, that would have turned our CS on and off. Did I? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I love how that delta V number just bounces around. Alright, yeah. 4.5 kilometers per second uh, to hit the node. We've got 4,800 left in the tank. That's absolutely fantastic. Maybe we'll keep that J2 stage attached. Yeah, we are keeping electric charge topped off. Why not? All right, so now we can just uh, spin off about 25 minutes until we get to the node. It will, of course, be at night. Oh, man, I way overshot. Oh, boy. Well, no, 10 minutes worth of five minute almost a six minute mark we can lock you again and we'll start to ullage in this J2 risky come on very stable ignition and we're going alright and I'm just gonna lay on the H key while we do this transfer see if I can't uh... no I wanna save some of that fuel just in case we have a correction that we want to do sometime in the next day or so, we'll still have some Delta V in that uh, S4B stage, which is awesome. We're packing stuff up and shipping very heavy things off to very distant destinations. I'm extraordinarily pleased with this. I messed that up pretty good. Well, it's a good thing we have another ignition. So I'm certainly not going to do 112 meters per second on the back of these RCS thrusters. <laughs> Alright, pay attention this time. Yeah, see, we're... What the hell, man? That is none encounter. Great. Well, we used the last ignition in this stage. How fantastic is that? 
Uh, we do have some of this uh, Aerozine and N204, so before we ditch it, we're going to transfer it all into our upper, or into our station proper. I just need to open up all the tanks. Come on, lock. There you go. Good. In. In. Look at that. And... Couple. No connection. Of course not. We don't need a connection. All right. The whole <laughs> the whole mission resides on this. So might as well plot the node. Try to get it sooner rather than later. That's in seven minutes. Seven hundred eighteen meters per second. Cause, god damn it, I don't even know how much we have. There's six ninety nine. There's seven fifty six. Uh, TWR on the station itself is dot two six. So we're going to just go ahead and use up all of its fuel, because why the hell not? I am going to try to be somewhat accurate on this one. Um, but I have no idea how much the burn's going to take, because uh, I want to use jettisoning that stage as a little bit of a nudge. It's not going to be much, but it'll be something. And anyway... Here goes. All right, about four minutes out, we will decouple. That did nothing for us. Let's activate our engine and light it up. Yeah, it says the burn will take five minutes. That doesn't bode well for accuracy, now does it? So, we will shut down. And get ourselves to about the two minute mark. We've got 36 ignitions on that, and I really... Oh, come on. Uh, <laughs> I can't win for losing. All right. Now then, everybody hope for the best. Well, we're a little bit off, but I'm willing to deal with that because that's going to be a whole lot easier to correct uh, once we're closer to an ascending or descending node, which um, I've already... No, I have not switched. Good. The <laughs> computer was having a heart attack when that was happening. It's not going to tell me my ascending or descending node. That's, that's fine. Yeah, we don't want to warp that far. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, then good ish I'm assuming there's launch one done and out of the way who so far we're still on track so we're just gonna take a quick save and uh, get on to rolling the next thing out to the pad so I I guess I'll see you there 
And well, here we are out on the launch pad with uh, LS, or LS Slug 1, uh, Life Support Slug 1. Uh, this is the first of uh, what I hope to be only four additional modules that we'll be sending out to our Mars station. Um, and this commentary is done entirely in post, if you couldn't tell already that this is uh, entirely sped up footage because I forgot to turn my microphone back on and did not look over until I went to stop the recording. So, go me, uh, winning at every chance. Anyway, this is the first of our launchers to go up on an entirely uh, HG3 built uh, DN series, uh, DN5 series rocket. So we have five HGC levels here on the bottom of the core stage, which will give us uh, considerably better thrust and better sea level ISP than the J2s that they're replacing. I do fully intend on uh, cycling all of the DN series rockets to use uh, HGC level engines, at least on their core stage. Uh, I'm still kind of weighing the options. There goes booster and fairing sep. But uh, we do have a bit of a problem with this. Uh, there are no other changes to this from the other DN5 um, that I have launched other than the engine replacement, yet we have this ridiculous oscillation that is making things extraordinarily difficult for me to try to stay in that uh, relative inclination, and this persisted all the way through the core stage. So, <laughs> kind of better that maybe I do this commentary in post because there are a lot of uh, swear words involved in this in trying to keep that uh, relative inclination with the moon at something appropriate. And if I could just point out for a second, to toot my own horn maybe just a little bit, that despite all of this ridiculous oscillation and extraordinary weirdness, I was still able to keep it at uh, about a third of a degree. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of think I'm awesome. Spin stabilizing did uh, absolutely nothing for my cause, really. Yeah. <laughs> that made things rather awkward. But as a testament to how good these engines actually are and what an improvement they are for the DN series as a whole, uh, we were still actually able to make it all the way to orbit and uh, fire up our S4B stage. And this is when I kind of noticed that maybe there was a problem here. See, this is supposed to be a HG3 vacuum series engine, which has two ignitions and uh, better ISP than the J2 it replaces and also much higher thrust. So after getting most of our circularization, circularization burn out of the way and done, which uh, should be concluding here momentarily, well, I guess not, maybe it did take a little while longer than I thought, there it is. There's the queue I was waiting for. And yeah, look at that, no ignitions remaining, oops. This is, in fact, another sea level engine and not the uh, vacuum engine. The sea level engine only has one ignition. So basically, the rest of this S4B stage and all of that fuel and that ridiculous amount of delta V that's still stored in there is useless. Uh, I thought about trying to take this to Mars on the back of that tug that's attached to it, but I really don't think that with all the weight and the heat shield, it's going to have enough delta V to do it all on its own. So uh, there's a lot of me thinking about things here, including maybe I can leave the liquid hydrogen tank attached, ditch this heat shield, and dock it with another support module, a, a fuel one perhaps, and use that engine plus this extra fuel to compensate for the lack of delta V. But these are all things that I'm going to have to get to probably in the next episode. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. I do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.